I'm joined by Matt and we're going to find out what it takes to become an RNLI lifeboat crew member. So we're here in the classroom. Matt, how do we get to this stage? How do I, what's my first steps to becoming a, a member of the RNLI team? Okay, so um, all the guys will usually live fairly close to a lifeboat station and uh, they'll, they'll go down, speak to the crew there and show an interest. Quite a lot of our guys now come with no sea experience, so they're all going to volunteer their time and then we have to train them at the college here in Poole. How long is the training and what does it involve? Okay, so the actual training from a new crew member up to fully trained, um, sort of competent crew uh, is, is quite a long period. It's not just a week here at the college, so they'll do a lot of training at station, but primarily we capture them here for a week's residential course where we'll take them through safety procedures, their own personal safety, as well as that of their crew members, and then uh, get them to do some of the basic skills on board the boat as well. Do you have any people that come along, I desperately want to do this, they come along, they do mm. the training and go, oh, it's not for me, or people that you have to say, we don't think you're quite getting it? Um, because obviously safety is paramount. Oh, most yeah. definitely. And I think, yeah, some people do turn up and uh, some of the most uh, stressful training we deliver is the sea survival experiences or um, the capsizing of the boats and on occasions people are asked to go under the boat to retrieve kit. It's quite an extreme environment and some people find it's beyond their capabilities and it may not be then for them. We'd rather find that out at the training end rather than once they're out at sea and especially if something went wrong. So how does our way a training figure mm. in uh, the training that you do? Okay. Yeah, so we, we actually offer quite a few of the RYA courses to uh, our volunteers. Um, the primary ones for guys coming in are things like the SRC ticket, so the use of radios. For our navigators, we still offer um, the radar certificate. And then for our potential helms or coxswains, uh, the yacht master certificates as well which um, bring in quite nicely sort of the exam preparation courses. Um, so there's a whole host of tickets that we actually use to complement what we do within the RNLI. Fantastic. Well, there's obviously a lot of knowledge that people can get and, and can learn some great skills to keep everyone yeah. safe out on the water. So we're now going to go and have a look at the Sea Survival Tank. Indeed. So here we are in the Sea Survival Centre. Mm. What goes on here? And tell us about some of the equipment that you've got in here. Yeah, certainly. So uh, this is one of the largest, in fact, it was the largest in the UK when built, uh, survival centres. So behind us, we've got a 25 metre uh, pool, uh, which is four metres deep throughout. So quite a shock for some of our guys that are used to their swimming pools with a shallow end. And uh, we're really fortunate that we can create six different types of wave in here, ranging in heights. Uh, so as you can tell, looking around, we've got about a metre of freeboard between the water and where we're stood. And that allows us to increase wave heights uh, to the point that it will actually just break over the tops a little bit. Uh, we can also make this room completely pitch black, um, shut down all the blinds, turn off the lights, and then the wonders of the modern world create thunder and lightning and rain in here as well. So you're generally recreating what they might come across once they're out on their, their lifeboat? Yeah, indeed. So the worst case scenarios, um, we can pretty much replicate for them in here um, and, and build a little bit of tension as well to make the training more realistic. Uh, the actual training that we do deliver in here is sea survival. So we get our life rafts in the pool um, and the guys will sit in those for about half an hour and experience what it's like to actually spend some time in the, in the actual um, raft. And then we can use the crane that you can see just up there to launch our inshore lifeboats. And then we do capsize training as well. So the guys will actually experience what it's like to do a capsize. And I imagine as a trainer, you've gone through all this yourself. What is that experience like? Um, it's quite a privilege to be honest um, there's not many places that you get paid to uh, do something so uh, fun for us and challenging at the same mm. time um, so yeah I think the first time I did it it was a very nervous experience um, the unknown especially in the dark as uh, some of the people have to experience um, but obviously as trainers now we do it on a weekly basis and uh, I'd say it, it gets to a point where we actually find it quite good fun. <laughs> So Matt, where do we find ourselves now? So we are now in the uh, full bridge simulator. So what that means is basically we've got a mock-up of a seven-class lifeboat's wheelhouse. 
and this is where we would now teach our guys how to navigate or be coxswains so or some of the skills they would use to be coxswains so this is a little bit further down the career path or the training path shall we say indeed yeah this is a little bit more technical now um, so we're looking at some of the equipment we've got here the navigation equipment um, the plotter the radar and the chart table below it so the navigators would be in here navigating the boat out to the areas we need to get to. The uh, conditions look like they're just starting to pick up for us. So the helm is responsible for driving the boat. Uh, so you've got your steering wheel and then we've got twin engines with twin throttles here. So to make the go, go forward, we're just gonna push those ahead. Okay, and the boat go. should hopefully start to move for you. So in the simulator here, what are we, what are we seeing or what would we be looking out for? Okay, so um, we've actually set this um, exercise up. We're leaving Dover Harbour. With the scenarios that we run, it's amazing how focused it makes the crew when they're doing their training. And sometimes you actually forget that you're in a simulator. It does become quite realistic yeah. and uh, quite a tense environment. So how many hours in the simulator would they do as part of this course? Yeah, so for the um, navigators, they spend probably on average about a day to a day and a half in here um, just because we can reset the scenarios very quickly we can change the environment very quickly um, the coxswains when they're down here on a coxswains development um, they spend again anywhere between one to two days in here um, just sort of high tuning the, um, the skills that they're learning um, before we take them out of float and then they get practice um, actually whilst they're on the real boats Thank you very much, it's fantastic. What a great piece of kit.